dedicated to Eastern and Southern Kentucky. This is WYMT Mountain News at 11. Good evening, I'm Keaton Hall. Many of Kentucky's most notable Republicans gathered for the 5th District Lincoln Dinner at the Corbin Center on Saturday night. WIMT's Chandler Wilcox details how the event brings national and local politicians closer to Eastern Kentucky. It was a sold out event as Republican politicians at each level gathered in Corbin. We're very blessed with amazing leaders um, up in Washington, D.C., as well as Frankfurt. So uh, we just want to be able to honor them and honor conservative values. Rasmus honored U.S. Senator Mitch McConnell and Dean of the House Hal Rogers with Corbin Colonel certificates for their work. I'm always worried and concerned about the people back here. Floods, fires, lack of jobs, loss of the steel industry, uh, coal business and the like. Uh, so it's a, it's, a, it's a continuous fight up there. McConnell expressed concern for Kentuckians dealing with inflation. Inflation is through the roof. Uh, the Biden administration uh, has spent too much money, uh, flooded the country with uh, money. Uh, it was widely predicted that would create 40-year inflation. Six Republican candidates for governor also attended the event, all expressing their commitment to the region. When I'm in the East, the people in the East say they're forgotten. When I'm in the West, you know, the people in the West say that they're forgotten. So it's important not to forget any part uh, of the state. Eastern Kentucky is God's creation. We need to make sure that we make this a tourist hub of the United States. We have a lot of things going for us, trail systems, outdoor recreation. Three Eastern Kentuckians were inducted into the 5th District Lincoln Club Hall of Fame. In Corbin, Channel Wilcox, WYMT Mountain News. Other Republican candidates for governor there were Kelly Kraft, Daniel Cameron, Alan Keck, and Bob DeVore. Last night's wind caused several outages in the Big Sandy region. For Big Sandy Rural Electric Cooperative, more than 5,000 outages were reported last night, and crews worked tirelessly to repair lines and replace more than 10 poles. As of 1 p.m., more than half of those outages were restored, but no estimated time of repair was established. Big Sandy RECC President Bruce Davis added that this amount of damage was not limited to just the REC's coverage area. It was very devastating. Uh, this windstorm, a tremendous amount of damage, not just here at Big Sandy RECC, but throughout our state. Kentucky Power is working to restore electricity in homes across the region. Friday's storm knocked out around 18,000 Kentucky Power customers across the state. Communications marriage manager Sarah Nussbaum says that number continues to drop as crews restore power, but some may be waiting until next week for lights to come back on. Every situation is different uh, in regards to um, what the issues are with the outages that we're looking at. Um, I can say that our crews have been out since early this morning and will continue to work on uh, getting everyone restored as soon as possible. Kentucky Power officials recommend reporting a power outage via their Facebook page or website. A FedEx driver narrowly escaped serious injury as he dropped off a package during the storms. Severe weather moved through the city of Erlanger on Friday. A doorbell camera captured this moment when powerful winds toppled a large tree onto the porch where the driver, Tony Antle, had just stood seconds earlier. There it goes. Antle told CNN on Saturday it was quite unsettling to see how close he came to dying or getting seriously injured. Certain restrictions on vehicles involved in restoring power and clearing debris in Kentucky have been temporarily lifted. Kentucky Transportation Secretary Jim Gray signed the official order today. The order temporarily relieves commercial drivers from maximum driving times and wait station stops while engaged in emergency response. The order will last through midnight on March 31st. Repairs and cleanup from yesterday's severe winds are underway across south central Kentucky. There are still thousands of people without power in Warren County. Some still trying to remove down trees and power lines from their yards. Crews from across the country joining Warren ERC, RECC crews to help repair efforts. It's estimated to be a multi-day restoration. I would caution people to understand that this is going to be a multi-day restoration. We have 29 additional crews coming in from different states to help us. So. 
we certainly are working throughout the day, throughout the night, but it, it's, it's a big storm. It's a, it's a big outage. So be patient with this. <laughs> Phelps says the South Central Kentucky is no stranger to storms like we saw yesterday. She also said that because of their resiliency and patience, they too will get through this storm. Well, thankfully, the weather is much quieter across the mountains tonight. Here's a live look right now overlooking portions of Hazard and Perry County. We are dry under a clear sky tonight and temperatures are chilly anywhere from the upper 30s to the upper 40s in some places. 48 for Jackson, 38 for Manchester, 36 in Clintwood and 46 over in Pikeville. So temperatures are chilly tonight thanks to the clear sky that will allow temperatures to fall as we go overnight tonight and into your Sunday morning. Up on radar, we are quiet all thanks to high pressure just off to the west and that will continue as we go into your Sunday and also for the first half of your Monday but we are watching out for some showers as we go into Monday night also into your Tuesday but tonight though the weather is quiet we stay dry under a clear sky overnight lows will be a little bit chilly falling into the middle and lower 30s as you wake up on Sunday temperatures could be close to freezing in some places as you wake up on your Sunday morning let's go through a future view tonight not much happening as you wake up on Sunday. Temperatures are chilly, but a nice warm up on the way. Middle to lower 60s by Sunday afternoon. Once again, we stay dry under plenty of sunshine and blue sky. And that quiet weather continues into Sunday evening and also into Sunday night as well. And as you wake up on Monday, temperatures not as chilly. Middle to lower 40s, but a nice warm up is on the way. Once again, lower 70s are possible on your Monday under a partly sunny sky and most of your Monday is dry, but we are watching out for some changes by Monday night into Tuesday morning. A few showers are possible as a weak weather system begins to move in by Monday night. The good news, no severe weather is expected, but we could see some showers by Monday night and also as you wake up on Tuesday and then we are tracking a cool down by the middle of the week. And speaking of those temperatures, we will be well above average on Sunday, Monday also into Tuesday. We should be in the middle 50s, upper 60s, lower 70s on Monday, lower 60s on Tuesday, and then a little bit cooler by Wednesday and Thursday. Highs back in the upper 40s and lower 50s. Here's a look at your Community Trust Bank seven day forecast for the weekend is always in view. A beautiful Sunday on tap across the mountains. We stay dry under plenty of sunshine. Temperatures middle to lower 60s, upper 60s, lower 70s on your Monday. And again, most of Monday is dry, but a few showers are possible by Monday night. Also into Tuesday morning highs on Tuesday, upper 50s, lower 60s, cooler on Wednesday upper 40s back in the lower 50s on Thursday. A few more showers by Thursday night and Friday and Saturday also looking pretty soggy. Upper 40s on Friday back in the upper 50s and lower 60s by this time next week. Keaton. Thank you, Cameron. Funeral arrangements were announced for Betsy Lane Elementary School teacher Leah Bentley. Bentley died on March 2nd at Highlands ARH Regional Medical Center. Visitation is scheduled for Sunday, March 5th at 5 p.m. at Nelson Frazier Funeral Home and on Monday, March 6th at the Dome prior to the funeral. Funeral services are scheduled for Monday, March 6th at 1 p.m. at the Dome at Betsy Lane Elementary School. There's gonna be no school at Betsy Lane that day, March 6th because of the funeral. It was December of 2021 when 82 year old Lois Rogers Trent was found dead in her home in the Whitco community of Letcher County with Kentucky State Police suspecting foul play involved. Though the investigation surrounding Trent's death is still ongoing, Trent's siblings are aiming to speed the process along. The family is offering a reward of $3,000 and a Harley-Davidson motorcycle for anyone who can provide information on Trent's death. Trent's siblings say they hope this reward can grab people's attention and hopefully get them the answers they're searching for. Please, if you know something, it might be your sister next time or your mother. Just let us know. Please call that little detective. Tell him what you know. Trent's siblings say they hope to find peace for her loved ones and justice for her. If anyone has information that may lead to the arrest or conviction of those involved in Trent's death, her family is asking those individuals to call KSP Post 13 at 606-435-6069. Seven months following the region's devastating flood, two Letcher County churches are partnering to help those still in need. New Freedom Worship Center of Jenkins and King's Chapel Church in Whitco 
hosted a giveaway today out of, outside of King's Chapel's church. Both churches have been serving their communities in this way following the flood, but church leaders knew they wanted to join forces to make an even bigger impact. I believe we ought to continue as long as we can. And as long as God blesses us, then we're going to bless others. And with people like Danny coming down, it means the world to us. And you know what? We don't ever know when somebody else there that's in need of something. If we can do something, I think we need to do something. Today's giveaway included food, clothing, space heaters, and even hot meals. Both King's Chapel Pastor Frank Adams and New Freedom Worship Ch Center Pastor Danny Quillen say they hope to partner for more events like this one in the future.